these are half-life problems which are exponential decay function problems because we have a function where the variable is an exponent in this case to the power of x and what this formula we're going to use is it's the half-life formula and a which is our final amount equals a sub zero which is our initial value or amount times one half which is the base of our exponent to the power of x and x is our variable which we plug in to find out how much material we have left uh, given this formula so anyway we have problems one through six i'm going to do the odd number problems one three and five plus i'm going to start into six a little bit since problem six is different a little different solve each problem we have um, there are 10 grams of curium 245 which has a half-life of 9300 years how many grams will remain after 37,200 years so let's just write out our formula we have a which we are trying to find out and do not know our final amount is equal to our starting amount which is 10 grams of curium 245 times our base of our exponent which is one half to the power of we have x right well x is equal to the time over half-life which in this instance is going to be our time is 37,200 years and our half-life is 9300 years and what we have is 37,200 divided by 9,300 is 4. So we would have 1 half to the power of 4. And so just working this out, A is going to be equal, our remaining amount, our initial amount, times 1 half to the 4th power. Well, 1 half to the 4th power is going to be equal to, using our rules of exponents, uh, excuse me, I put one-fourth to the fourth power, I meant to put one-half to the fourth power. One-half to the fourth power is going to be, it's going to be equal to one over two to the fourth power. And so we have one-sixteenth. So we have ten times one, the fraction one-sixteenth. And A is equal to ten-sixteenths which simplifies to 5 eighths and that would be 5 eighths what grams of what is that going to be uh, curium I'll just abbreviate curium 245 after 37,200 years and we could decimalize this as 0 0.625 grams too. Okay, so I'm going to just box in our answer and we're going to go on to our next odd number problem which is 3. The half-life of rhodium 105 is 1 1.5 days. If there are initially 7500 grams of this isotope how many grams would remain after 30 days? Well same same equation we have a equals a sub zero times our base one half to the power of I'm gonna put instead of just X here I'll put um, I'll put time we can just put T over our half-life I'll just bring that HL so in this instance we would have a is equal to our initial value which is 7500 times our base one half to the power of well our time is going to be 30 days and that's going to be over our half-life which is 1.5 and since 30 divided by 1.5 is equal to 20 uh, a is going to be equal to 7500 times one half 
to the power of 20. And I think that's going to get to be a pretty small amount. It's going to be in grams. So let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. A equals, get in our calculator, uh, 7,500 times one half. I'm just going to put 0.5 to the power of 20. And we get this amount here, 0 0.007153 grams. Okay, let's just put that down. grams of uh, rhodium 105 so half-life of 1.5 days really makes that element that isotope disappear in a hurry okay next on our problem problem five in a nuclear reaction 150 grams of plutonium 239 are produced how many grams would remain after 1 million years the half-life plutonium uh, 239 is 24,400 years so the same formula, we have A, which we do not know, equals A sub zero. I'm just going to write out the formula first. Times one half to the power of our time. I'll just read it at T over our half life. Now the units have to be in the same. If you looked at problem three, we had the half life in 1.5 days and 30 days. Here we have. Uh, million years and 240,000 years, we have to make units the same. So A, it's going to be our initial amount, which is 150, A sub 0, that's A sub 0, times 1 half to the power of, well, our time over half-life is going to be 1 million divided by 24,400. In our calculator, we could put this in as part of the equation. I'm going to go to our calculator and just do it right now, right here. And so, 1 million divided by 24,400, we get that improper fraction, and we could decimalize that fraction if we press control. Here I get 40.9836. So 48, 40.9836. So going to our calculator, A is going to be equal to, we take 150 times 0.5 to the power of, and I'm going to put in this answer right here, and this is the last answer calculated. To get that number in place, I just put control, negative sign, which is ANS, last thing calculated, and we get this amount right here, which is going to be quite a small amount. So 6.89916 times 10 to the negative 11th power. Six point eight nine nine one six. times 10 to the negative 11th power grams. So a very small amount will be left. So uh, that's what that'll do. Okay. Let's go on. I want to just look at problem six because problem six is really fundamentally different in that we have the same equation which is going to be A is equal to our starting value, starting amount A sub zero times one half to the power of, we have time over half-life. 
Well, in this case, we have our half-life, but we don't have the time. We're asked how old. So to just put the numbers in the formula, we have, uh, let's see, how old is a fossil with 0 0.0625? So 0 0.0625 is our current amount and that's going to be equal to our initial amount, which is 1 gram times 1 half to the power of, we have time, which we do not know, over half-life, which we do know, which is 5730. And there are different things we can do. There are methods, in our, kind of solving methods we can use in our calculator. We could take um, y equals this on the right minus this on the left and graph see where the thing ends up that's going to our x-intercept is going to tell us what the value of t is but it's going to be out in the thousands probably because if we just had half of one that would be 57 5730 years so we're going to go ahead and uh, use our properties use logarithmic properties to solve this. What we're going to do is um, we have the base of an exponent can be the base of a logarithm. So we can rewrite this equation as log base one half or 0.5 of this amount on the left 0, 0.6 Two five equals t over fifty seven thirty, and a logarithm is really what power do we have to raise something to to get a number? And so solving for t, if we divide, if we multiply this equation by five thousand seven hundred thirty, we would get t is equal to 5,730 times log base one half of 0 0.0625. Make sure that's a little pretty visible. Oops. Right there. Pretty legible point. 0 0.0625. Okay, and that's going to equal, let's go to our calculator, we put 5,730 times, oops, I got that wrong, 30 times log base 1 half, which is 0.5, of point zero six two five and that's going to give us our time which is twenty two thousand nine hundred thirty years so a little different this last problem that's how long it's going to take for this kind of radioactive decay so I hope this exercise set has been helpful. Good luck. Do as much you can on it. And thank you for viewing.